Okay, so I'm going to show you this. So, it's something I've repaired already and it's got sold. This is a customer. And then about a week later, it was tripping the stat. And then it was tripping the st I reset the stat, showing them how to reset the stat. And then they were complaining that they were having to reset it every five minutes. Now I run this with a pretty much dry load of towels. They weren't clean, they were just ready to get, so they had a bit of dampness from like the bath. And I mean an actual full load of towels. But it didn't trip the stats, even though I ran it for about two hours, already dry. And it was still hot. So we've put some stuff in from the Zug. <laughs> So that's the first thing. Is that bang? So, but it does that bang and then it stops. And the thing is, it's not like there's no air going through it. Because when I come down here, it's still hot. It's still, uh, well, I mean, it's cold. So, the trip button is here. You can actually press it any time. Oh, wait, it tripped. So, it has tripped. But it's that banging. You need to kind of like look at its sounds. It has actually tripped. Um, no, I wasn't here. So ready for two hours, fine. No trip. Um, so you won't actually see that come out. The inside it pings out. We're gonna run it now. The it's that, cl that clanging right at the top stuff, and it is only at the stuff. <laughs> so, if I push this backwards. There we go. So it doesn't go that way. No, yeah, everything's all right around here. Yeah, it's still solid. I'm not entirely sure it's making that banging noise. Right, so let's test this out. No, we're not actually like in there because this works, it's also staying here as well. It's a Bosch Max 7 self cleaning condenser, which means it's a heat pump. It's not the uh, further heat pumps that, because Siemens kind of like, Siemens Bosch make quite a few heat pumps. They make an A plus energy rated one, and they make an A plus plus one, and an A plus plus minus like 50% one as well. So there's loads. So this is just an A plus one. Um, it's been stood for two days in the workshop, so um, we should be okay. Any water that was in it, it's been on its side about three, four times now in the car. Any water that was in it, probably just 
fallen out. Any water on the control panel should be all dried. It shouldn't be because actually it was laid this side and it always lay on that side. So um, uh, the mod number, uh, the only thing with the door is that it's a little bit like you can lift it up, see? Um, not great on these Boshes. These Boshes do tend to do that. It's WTW 84160. It's the basic kind of, it's the basic heat pump. It's got a twin fill system, both of which are quite empty in terms of flow. Um, obviously we can't clean the condenser, which is quite annoying um, because it uses obviously the water from the tank and it's got a further filter in there. So when it lets water back in over the, well it does, it's, it's a, it has like, instead of pumping it to the condenser, it just pumps it back round through the heat pump, the heat exchanger. Ah, I'm going to see if it works, I'm going to throw, throw these few bits in. Uh, I'm going to switch it on. Oh, we're on. And, uh, yeah. Um, because what's happening um, is, obviously my two daily dryers are in here. The AG still doesn't work properly. I mean, it works. It's taking longer for some reason now to dry a load, or maybe I just forgot. But the thing is, it clunks because obviously it's got the wrong kind of heat pump base. So that's going into storage. That is going to go in here. But because this leaks, um, I don't know. I think it's leaking because it is actually facing forward. So it's kind of coming this way. That and the fact that this needs cleaning it hasn't been done for ages. But then that, so that's going to go on the bottom. The heat pump's going to go on top. They'll both run, the heat pump will be used more often um, than the regular one. But this does work fully, I'm absolutely amazed. Uh, that's the heat pump kicking in there. Making its usual droning noise. I don't like the noise. Um, yeah, it's very weird as well, because, I mean, that's quite old now. And see how yellowed it is? Um, this has actually gone brittle, hence why it's broke. That's all brittle. The normal heat pumps just started to like yellow, but if you notice it's kind of like started yellowing more this side and less and less this side. Yep, nothing else is yellowed. Just the front fascia and the tank cup. I'm not selling it on this way because it's staying here. Um, I want the Bosch stuff. Anyone knows me, I love the Bosch stuff. I prefer to pick Bosch more than Miele. Um, I love meal, but it's far too expensive in, in, in terms of both usage. Meal is fractionally better than Bosch, but for the money, Bosch is still way better. So that's a rant over. Got some scrap there. That was up there. Some old telecommunications. As you notice, in my anyone who knows anything about my workshop, which you won't, is that you've got loads of telephone points. We've got one here, for example. We've got several in the actual main area. About, we'll say several, there must be about 12 or 13. And it has a, a communications box, but it's all been disconnected anyway before I moved in. There's like this wire here. It's cut, I've cut it there because it went to that. And it goes long down around here. And then it actually ends up getting cut off somewhere else anyway, so it's not even connected. Huh. Seems to be... Well, let's see if the heat pump actually works. We've got a time program of 30 minutes as well. So it must heat up quite quickly then. And obviously we've still got a super quick 40, which is the sensor program. Uh, a bit more basic than the other Bosch. Well, I'm not bothered as long as it works, because I only use one program anyway. I only use copper dry, and that's it. Right, so let's uh, test this. It's a Zanussi uh, Alcocycle 1300 ZWC1301, but this is the 2018 mod, not the 2010 one. I had a 2012 version, 
This is a 2018. Uh, what this means, basically, is... Ugh, the 60 and 40 eco cycles are now marked out with the little logo on it. And instead of delicate... Uh, what was it? It used to be hand wash 30, you now get mix 20 instead. Um, so I'm going to be filming the mix 20 on this. Um, I'm also going to be f filming the standard cycle to see if there's any difference. Hopefully there's a bit of, bit of, a, bit of a difference in the spin uh, performance kind of thing. Then again, not too sure because we've got a 2015 um, in my house here. Which is obviously way beyond the Polish 2013-2014 uh, ones, like the Aquasi, uh, the Flexi Dosi ones. Um, that's actually like a proper jet. Uh, it's not got a jet system, but it's got a proper seven. Well, seven kilogram. It's it's, it's class as eight there now. Uh, anyway, let's uh, go into this. So. Um, Right, I'll do a quick test of Bill. Um, and basically, I just picked it up really, really, really dirt cheap. And I mean dirt cheap. Should be fully working. The only reason why I'm selling it because apparently I had a big, bigger tumble dryer. So they decided to get a full size washer. Which. Um, it was unnecessary anyway. They didn't need it where they were because they could have had, obviously had a full size washer in the first place. So, uh, for some reason bought their apartment and very much only a couple and they said they were doing a lot of washes in it. Well your water is a three kilogram jump. So they decided to buy a bigger one. Um, I'm gonna keep the little sticker on of course it's slightly coming away but I'm gonna keep it on because it's uh, not too bad. Um yeah it's coming off in this little corner but it's still clean basically. Quickly test all its functions. Uh, what have we got? Never leaks. Um, what's number four? Heat. Heat and jet system. Wash. Yeah, let's see how much crud comes out. Well, it's pretty clear anyway, even now. So. There's no mould, no crud in the door seal. The drawer's really clean actually. Cool like it's actually been used. Um, well, that's pretty clear. Beep is slightly higher toned, so. So it's the minute it's worse. That's just the 41 error code. Right, so I'll just stick some uh, does it in. Going really, uh, just drop a daz, sort of see if it actually fully works with the heater and everything. I mean, it's just daz, isn't it? So, hopefully, I don't get any air occurrence with it either. Let's go get on. That's actually dirty, not my drawer, really clean. Right, it's just not 
been used. Not bad for like a... I think it's even 18 months old. I checked the code, it said something... 26? 18? It's about 15 months... Uh, yeah, 18 months old. It's summer now. Well, there you go. We're going with this thing then. Uh, oops. A bit too much. That's, you know, 20 mil. So this heat pump's been on for, I don't know, what time is it now? About 20 past. Well, it's only just, and it's finished about five minutes ago, so it's taking 45 minutes to do these. Oh, and they're fully dry. Oh. Like, just about perfect. Um. Yeah, the main the main Bosch kind of over dries it a little bit, in a sense, but not with this. So. Right, so this is the first time I'm showing it. Um, I've had it for about eight months, six months. I'm not really too sure. I've had it a while anyway. Um, it's a matching Zanussi. Uh, countertop dishwasher DCS 12W that I bought for 50 quid used and I've never tested it it's not been used uh, basically it was also the I don't know, move, mother moved out or died or whatever it's not been used since um, right, there's no detergent compartment. You just put the detergent in, close it up. Obviously, because we're just using the tablet usually. Where is it? Alright, I'm gonna get it going and then you'll see. So we're just gonna stick a tablet in the, obviously, in there. Uh, let's see if it works. This is your reservoir for uh, rinse aid. Um, and that's the adjuster for how much. You've got a salt thing down there. You have apparently five settings. Uh, that means salt, that means on, um, that means obviously no salt. And then you've got 65 and 55. So the idea is you've got. Um, you got wash, and then rinse, 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 rinse. And that's all you've got. You've got wash. That's it. Wash, 55 or 65. Ready? Right. Now, if you notice, every time I turn to the drain bits, it will switch on to drain. And that's it, you've got on or off. It does show you the three rinses, so we've got two rinses and then obviously hot rinse. I don't think there's a drying cycle actually, I don't. If it's drying, it's got residual drying and that's it. We've got it on 65, we put the tablet in just to see if it works, just to clean it out. If it does work, I'll be filming it. Um, for obvious reasons. Right, and if you notice, this is the drain. Right here, and it goes all the way down here. Now, the reason why nothing comes out is on these compact dishwashers. The difference is, is that it has a release on it, on the drain. Um, obviously, it's a flow back. So when it's, um, so basically, that's why countertops are different to the, the actual freestanding ones. The freestanding ones have to be lifted up with the drain. Content tops can be like, low like that, like that because obviously it uses so little water. I think it only uses seven or eight liters per per a wash. We've got that, which obviously take about ten. It's a standard thing. Uh, little Zanish is on its first rinse. Um, right, the other thing is, it's all made of plastic, even the top. Oh no, actually, oh, that's metal. 
nice change. Plastic, plastic. And it's not actually made by Zanussi. It's got a Zanussi switch gear, because obviously that's a Zanussi button, Zanussi dial. Uh, but it's actually made by, I believe, by me, by like media or something like that at the time. Hey, actually, it might have been made by Hey. It wasn't made by Zanussi. You got the Zanussi version, you got a Trixie ben Bendix version. Um, I got an older Zanussi version, which you'll see some point during the year, uh, later on in the year. That needs a plug on it before I can get it going. And I paid a penny for that as well. Um, this works. Uh, we're gonna, it's gonna go to I think the house share. The other one will, if that works, will stay in the workshop. Uh, I've got this going on purpose. I need to get it going. Um, apart from the fact I need to test it, the fact is I've got all loads of washing up to do. All this is washing up, so I get it in. And I can't actually physically wash up because I only have a cold tap and it's. I can't even get to it. Anyway. So everything's building up, everything's going mouldy, everything needs to go into the dishwasher. Get cleaned. Cool! See if it works. Right, so we've got this uh, Samsung EcoBubble VRT. It's n it will be fixed, hopefully, and not be sold on. I will be keeping it because, of course, it's a uh, oversized 14 kilo American size washer, heavy duty. The flap's present, but it's gone rusty because it's been sat around for six months inside the drum. That was missing, but the because it came from a shop, they found it, but they forgot to give me a filter. Uh, this filter is from another Samsung Eco Bubble, but that is actually shorter. So I don't know what that one's... F it looks like an inset one, I think. Um, I have usually lying around, and it seems to fit, so... Um, and not leak. Only so I could test it. Now, I've put it on the Eco Drum Clean, press play. It's done the pre-wash, where it obviously just does like a five minute washout of anything that might be sat around. It's then obviously gone to main wash, and now it's come up with 4E. 4E means it's not filling. Obviously, it's filled through the pre-wash fine, so there's no obviously problems with the fact that there's water going to it. Which only suggests one thing, and it's that at the back. That means the main wash valve is broken. It's not opening up. Now let's see, so, <clears throat> let's see, so the pre-wash in this is here, and you've got the main wash and the fabric softener. So to create a pre-wash, oh there you are, you've got pre-wash and main. So this is the main one, and that's the pre-wash one, so, uh, alright, now I'm going to show you the problem, another problem. See what I mean? Uh, the power button on it is very dodgy. But other than that, all the switch gear still works. Hmm, I wonder if DE1 is to do with the fact I've swapped them around. Huh, weird. Obviously the door... So, you could hear the clicking, but it wasn't doing anything. This was working actually before I'd swap them over, so let me just do that again. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just let a...
supposed to do anything now. The door lock did work before. And now it's just not wanting to play a ball at all. Right, I'm not too bothered if it doesn't work, the board, because I've got a spell on. Sort of. I'm going to rip it out of another machine. Because I have another one of these <clears throat> with knack of bearings and so much line scale build up. Yeah, that's why the bearings are gone. <sighs> How anything washed in that, I do not know. Um, I've also got a, VR, uh, a dryer that matches this as well. Don't know if it works. Can't get it in because it needs a 30 amp direct feed. And I haven't got one installed yet. Of course, that means that will be put in at some point. Not any of it, is it? Right. Right, time to. Still clicking. Can you hear that? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Stop now. Um, right, another thing here is the hot point, the door's off it, it's got the smoke door screen. I've ordered a door without a smoke screen, so hopefully it will go on. And you can actually see inside. That's an update on that. Right, time to get other things moved around. Right, so we're testing this. I know this is part of my test reel, but it's going to get its own full video uh, anyway because it's an in between. So I'll just show you what's wrong with this. I'll do the actual video at another point. Um, but anyway, um, this was my baby mummy's cousin's mother's. Oh no, un so baby mummy's uncle's washer. The one that had the back, um, the cousin that had the Becco Excellence. This is her mum's. Um, but as you can see, the door seal's completely eaten, and that's because... It's that one. There you go, that's the one. That spider lug has snapped. <coughs> um, so I decided to get a new one. So, and they had the money anyway to just buy a new one anyway. Um, they, have a, they had a Samsung heat pump dryer. Um, which was of the later design to this. So it's the, the Samsung dryer was the same design as that. Where it sort of curves around like that. So they bought another Samsung. Um, which the, and they told them not to go for the wash door because it's a waste of time. <coughs> and what they bought is the, a 9 kilo version. A later version of that really. They just got a later version of that. So it's still got its digital inverter. It's got the same drum, similar programming, still got eco bubble. So anyway, with this, I'm gonna just put it on eco drum clean first. But then later on, you will actually get some cycles out of it. I'm gonna do a lab test on it. I'm not gonna destroy it too much because a lot of the parts are gonna come back off it. I really want the parts off it. Let's go on now. I was saying that the board's now playing up and now. And I have, but saying that, I do also have a spare machine. It has had one part nicked off it already, and that's the cable. But then what I did later on, while this was running, was I put a... I chopped the original plug off, because it was all smashed. And then put that one on. So actually, that's running the, with the cable from that. And that's running with the cable from that. So we'll let it do its drum clean, should be fine, should be no issues. While we get on the, we're going to put some other machines into test. And um, right, I'm going to take my time out. Um, and we're going to put another Indesit washer dryer in. Right, so we've got this Indesit <coughs> IWDC6125 washer dryer. Right. So I'm just going to show you some... Now I bought this for a tenner and I also bought an LG which I got told said it won't start, you know, it won't change anything which made me just think, oh the child lock's on. More on that later because actually the bearings on that are gone. However, they said on, with this one it, it works fine as a washer but it doesn't 
the but the dryer doesn't work. But it got me thinking because this just came from a house, just an ordinary council estate house. Um, to be honest, they didn't have much stuff, or everything was either old or they just looked like they barely getting by. <coughs> and they let me have this for a tenner, even though the washer works fine, but the dryer broken. But now I don't know whether it's just stupid logic here. They had a Creda three kilogram compact dryer. So I was thinking, why can't you just keep this as a washer and use the little dryer as a dryer? So it started to get me thinking, maybe there's more to this than meets the eye, <clears throat> other than it just being the dryer. Now, they put a blue marker on uh, to indicate, probably more clearly, because the little indicator is still there. But they are right to kind of do it, it's not right. But I've opened up the door and this doesn't look right. It's sitting on top there. Then as you look round, right, this side, it's too close. And on this side, it's how it should be. Um, I'm going to look at it later. <coughs> but it looks like, because there's five holes underneath, if the suspension has been done at some point, or at any point, it looks like it's not been put on properly. It's been brought forward one by accident. That's just my guess. Uh, let's see if it works then. So, I'm gonna. Actually, I'm gonna test the dryer out first, I think. Let's see if it trips like anything. Or whether it's just not getting hot. So, what I'm gonna do is turn the dryer to. 40 minutes. No, hang on. So what we're gonna do? I'll just do white cotton. We'll just do white cotton. 40 minutes on the dryer. 90 degrees. No, that's. Uh... Actually, no. Let's just see if it actually like works. Works first. So we'll turn it on. We'll fill it with water. Drain pump's working. I don't know the test mode on this series. Right, something's not right because that you shouldn't be doing that. Has it got the dryer on? Oh. Right, so the door wouldn't unlock when it was switched on. <clears throat> I was to turn the machine off and the lock wouldn't unlock. So it was unlocked, it turns to turn it off, in a minute the door lock disengaged. So it's just kind of telling me that there's something wrong. I think it's just too hot. I think it's getting too hot.
But I got told it works as a washer. So I've just added some gas. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Right. Let's uh, see what happens. That's just a washer then. Brushes did sound very warm. I'm surprised we don't do anything actually. No, right, we're clicking away now. Hear the clicks? <coughs> Sounds like a couple still going there. Yeah, the, the, the motor brushes there sound rough on it, so I'm wondering whether they're actually just completely gone. It might explain the drying, but it doesn't really explain anything else. Uh, no, mate, hang on. That would explain the filling on the final rinse, because obviously every time it clicked, it's tried to do a tumble, and it's re kind of resetting almost. Because it can't do it. I'll explain the spin. So, <coughs> I'm gonna do. Set it off. Set it back on. Select spin. So it should drain and then get confused. I think. Well, it should do anyway. Oh, by the way. There's detergent there. I didn't add that. It's the whole point for Eco Clean. <coughs> hmm. But they said it works as a normal washer. How can it? Ready? Tell us the motor, ready? There we go, click. Go. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Right, so we figured that out. Yeah, the motor needs looking at on this. So we will do. Right, next. Yeah, this is what the <coughs> bubble does. <coughs> anyway, I'll move on to this. 
watching them. People might have seen this on YouTube before. Little Benz. So I've got it, we swapped it. We've got, um, he's got my WM52B that was up for sale for the public. I was like, it's having me. Just basically swapped it and a bit of film on my way. And that's it. <clears throat> um, so it, uh, it does work. So we're going to select program B. I'm going to select heavy soil because I've only put a cold feed on. And heavy soil just fills up through the cold only. So we might as well do that. Um, I'm going to explore some things on here because obviously it goes solid there. But that's no program indicators. It goes solid at F and it goes solid at G. Then obviously you can hear the over, which means there's a pre-wash section there. And there obviously means there's a 60 degree program, then a 50, then a warm once. And actually in between there, there's actually a sort of an acrylic wash, basically, hidden away. <coughs> they do exist. So anyway, we'll select program B, heavy soil. We'll put a little bit of dazz in just to help. Yeah, you get to see all this as well. <laughs> it's also not level. Yet. Well, anyway, which means I don't need right. That's all heavy soil does. <coughs> Normally it'll fill up with, say, pure hot. 95, and a mix of hot and warm, hot and cold on 60. But with heavy soil, it just goes through cold only. Obviously allowing the enzymes to work. Sorry, but that is the coolest thing ever. And this is one of my childhood machines as well, which I've been looking for for ages. I can't remember what the spin was because obviously there's a 1450 and a 1250. This is the 1450. So really lucky but it was <coughs> jet system excel the LEDs slightly flickering but let's be honest that's probably from age because it's that old don't forget you know the LEDs aren't made to last forever That is the coolest thing ever. That just goes into spin. Basically, that is literally like 400 RPM. Actually, uh, something like pretty much in temp used to. I think it's that. I think that is actually right. It's 250 RPM. We'll see when it stops. <laughs> yep, it is two hundred and fifty RPM. It gets stuck draining.
あとね I wonder if the 25 has anything to do with the temperature itself I think it makes sense oh, obviously that's the um, fluid Nineteen twelve. It's not an hour counter, is it? Or a cycle counter? Want to keep in mind that. If it's an hour or a cycle counter, it's not done its threshold. died way before it's time. Seven years old in a two-person family is probably used back three or four times a week. Not good. Can't wait to do the full cycle in this. Right, so we've got another Indusit washer dryer. Let's hope this time this one will work. There's no guarantee with this uh, because I bought it from the auction rooms with no working order on it. But as I've come to learn, buying them an auction with the non working order tends to be better than buying them with the working order sticker on. Two reasons. Number one, <coughs> Without the working order stick, it usually means they haven't been there around, uh, the person hasn't been around to tell them that they um, are in working order, i.e. they're deceased. Or two, and the, and the other thing is, by putting work, non-working order on, they get sold for less money. But, before I bought this, I did go in and had a look. Um, there's a bit of a smell, of course. There's a little bit of the, 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 the seal ain't too bad. Actually, I think all that will come off. A bit of good scrubbing, that might actually come clean. But it is actually fairly clean. I've got a little light. Turn the drum. All seems fine. Pulled on the uh, spider. Fine. Pulled on the drum paddles. And they are proper solid in place. No worries there. So, cosmetically, we've got this bubbling patch here, which is slightly unusual when it starts there, but it's accompanied by its actual bubbling patch, which is obviously under the decision drawer, which is really common. Um, there's a scratch there which I didn't notice. It's almost like a crack, but it's not. There's also a scratch here, and the kit plate didn't come with it. Um, the stick is going to stay in place because actually that's all cosmetically fine. It's all still stuck on. It's not faded. It's fine. The actual sticker will stay. <coughs> and I will find a kit plate for it. Um, I generally do. So. I'll plug it in. So here's one of these three, two, one thing gums. Ready? Three, two, one. I can get it in. Ready? Three, two, one. Beep. And we're switched on. And we've got five hours and fifty one because it's on drying. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that seems fine. Switch gear, fine. That could be quicker, but fine. Turned on, fine, I think. Oh, it didn't turn on, did it? It was already on. Uh, turn off. Oh. Okay, so let's see if test mode works on this. It's usually... Yeah, that's about right. <coughs> uh, so we've got an FO6. Don't know why, because it actually just did it did lock. So 
I'll go F06, I don't know. Um, oh, now I'm locked out for some reason. Alright, let's turn it off. Okay, so we'll turn that off. I'm going to turn that to 40. Alright, ready? Seventeen minutes. Work. Ready? Alright, we're happy with that. We're officially in test mode. Apparently 17 minutes <coughs> on the normal test mode. And you can add dry in and go to like six hours. No. I've added 42 minutes just to see if the actual dry works. Why not? It's great test mode. down here. That's probably why. <sighs> Stop it. Why are you leaking? I mean that's improper. Now you can take ages, so I'll just knock it off to cold. Stop leaking! Do a normal drain. <coughs> huh? You never done that. Oh, why it's leaking. Mm, let's try again then. Right. I'm gonna get a new towel, just in case. Drain pump get back in. Alright, it's done. Alright. Do a normal spin. I know it fails, so. Huh. Well, it does work.
So, I'll we'll just put on drying for 50 minutes. It's weird how the test mode didn't work properly. I mean, it could be because it was messed around. You just turn it off from 40 to cold. Right, so we're quitting the spin. It did do its first burst. And that's all tested. Uh, the filter seems to be fine. I'm going to leave this towel here. <coughs> so, all I'm going to do now is test the dryer for about. That's warm. So I'm gonna run for about five, six minutes. Once basically keep going until it actually just gets warm. <coughs> I think we're away now actually with that as well. Alright, so we're back in again. Let's turn back on. Um, right, let's see if it actually works. It does now. Although, I still can't understand why this is more to this side than that side, because it mounts exactly the same. The, um, Suspension pins are on the right side, so I'm not on the sure why. Oh. That's still not quiet. <clears throat> Thank you. 
the pump's been. Draining out fine. And now the dryer. 11, 40 minutes. Oh. 40 minutes. Start. So I'm gonna let that, it takes three minutes for the actual heat to kick in, so. We'll come back then. All right, so I picked this up along with that you can hear it now because it's now working. The Indesit IWC or something, IDC, and it said uh, it switches on but cannot select cycle. It's not actually turned on, it's actually flickering. But, probably not worth repairing anyway because. Yeah, the bearings are gone. And by looks thing possibly a spider because there's actually a few dings there, can you see? So maybe the spider's also gone. No, it's alright intact, but and I've only just noticed so the, the door seal's ripped. Hey. Oh, it does turn on. Uh only half of it is lit up, which is a bit weird. Um, some of it works. Oh, sort of works. I reckon I can. Since half of it lights, I wonder if we can get eco up. But it's definitely beyond repair. Yeah, and um, where's the thing missing? That's missing as well. So this won't stay in. Ugh! Gross. I don't know why I paused it, it won't do anything. I'm not sure if it won't do anything. It's very, um Broken. Yeah, we're gonna get it in. It should work. It did start then. We'll see what it does. But it's way beyond the economical repair. So I might turn it off. Yeah, as soon as you get to synthetic 40, it doesn't. I just think, I don't think it just lights up, that's all. Um, it's a little bit off. So, watch. Delicate colds, delicate 30, delicate 40. It does select the 30 minute program. It just doesn't light up on here, that's all. Um, and then you got... But it won't go to instant spin, which is a bit... 
I know we're sort of stuck at the minute. Uh, and the 400 lights lit up, but it doesn't do anything. None of them are doing anything. Oh, wait. Oh, we're getting there. It's sort of just really dodgy electrics. I reckon we can do Eco 60. <clears throat> we should make it to do a cycle, should be able to do a cycle with it, so yeah. Cool. Definitely beyond the economic repair though. Yeah, so it turns out the Washer dryer, where the it would find the washer and didn't dry properly, the dryer works perfectly fine. Because it's not warm in there. So we put this on there just a drying cycle only. Put it on the cord dry with some towels. Yeah, while it dries. Okay, so we've got this Hoover um, Optima Special Edition SE148. Um, right, it's 12, it's, it's 12 years old, but for the last four, it's done nothing. It's still around doing nothing because it's broken. Um, the guy doesn't know or can't remember what it wasn't doing, or was doing. Um, obviously, the uh, door seal is really manky. The fairings and spider are all fine. So, uh, I'll just see if it fills up the water first. Not that the, uh, vents. yeah.
Okay, now I'm a little bit baffled. What's wrong with this? Will I do it spin? Let's see if it comes up with any other codes. Aye, the uh, Michael with error, right? Right, so having no idea, or well, I mean, at least not initially, what no idea what's wrong with this. Put some sheets in. Everything's kind of cleanable on this, actually, so. Ooh. Where's that mold's coming off? I think it's still soaking now, but it's coming off. Especially here. What's going on here? This is yellow. Yeah, no, it's not coming off. Um, yeah, I'm not too bothered about this bedding because this is the workshop bedding, or at least I don't like to throw this bedding in. Tess! Now, we put this bedding in. Well, I'm going to set on a uh, cotton 90 with pre wash. Yeah. This has been sat around for four years in like a stables, garages kind of thing. Um, the guy who got my OPH714 had that for the stables. This was the own machine in their own house. And when they had the new one delivered, they forgot to take, it, take the old one away. Because they live so remotely, so far away. So I've got a Miele uh, W3204 that I bought for like 20 quid with, with the main wash light flashing. Um, the check drain and check inlet are lit. Give it a few so I can probably start it. When it starts, but we've got three dashes, main wash to come on straight away. Um, so first I can actually press check drain. So... So, um, right, just need to look into it. Main wash light apparently means that there's a heating problem, heating element problem somewhere, uh, including jammed on full, so it's jammed on, or it won't switch off. That's probably why it's coming up straight away. <clears throat> I can take it to finish, and we're fine there. If I press, I won't do anything there. Steady flashing start. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at this then. Um, it has got a kick plate. It's uh, Rusty the brother's bigger brother. It's um, inset. Um, Lots 
like there isn't anything to the actual uh, thing. There's no power to the board. She said it wasn't completing the wash cycle sometimes. I don't want to complete the wash cycle at all, is it? It's got no power. Hang on one sec. Right, so the Hoover's just like gone on to its intimate spin. Um, it sounded like it did a burst, sort of, and then slowed down and just stopped and it's just doing nothing right now. But then brushes so sound really worn out. Um, here's the into washer dryer that's probably coming to an end now actually. It's still hot. Now, um, what's happened is instead of the burst of water coming through the pre-wash, they're now coming through. So we've got the innocence board, the WIA121. Um, we've just got a little, looking at it, we've got some um, blackening here and blackening on the here. So we'll take out the actual board and see what is uh, any more burning on the other side. Um, I think there's some blackening here as well. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I've just wiped it away, I'm at That's like really black. Yeah. So we've got burning on this one, this one. Um, so on this L1. So we've got burning on L1. Um, D17 and D18. Right, so underneath here. Um, we've got this pin. Um, on the end of the chipboard, burnt, going to here and here, as well as here, where does that relay? There's 18. <clears throat> if we then go on to use to here, so I lost it over. So there you are, there's that board. So there's the main board. And we've got some burning on there. And if you notice, we've got some capacitors. Well, as that. So, there's a. Uh, resistor there. It's looped. Yeah, right, sorry, that's uh, 17. I'll have a look and see if we can fix it. But, I'm not too bothered because we can actually like completely transform this, which is what might happen yet. Um, it involves completely rewiring and putting in the main board in down at the bottom because there is actually a bit there for it. Play main board in and change it over to a WI one uh, WI B one one one. Um, we're not sure yet. So the Hoover is just not working at all at the minute. Um, it keeps draining every three minutes. So, so what I'm gonna do turn it off. Turn it to. Um, I'm gonna start on spin. I think the brushes are fully burnt out now. I'm just gonna guess that. Right, so we've got this Indesit WIB111. Oh no, wait. 
It's not. What it actually is, it's the Inset WI B111, which I stripped down that had a broken spider. And it's a WI A121 that had a broken board. What it's actually involved doing is taking obviously the top board, the back board, rewiring it, and changing the pressure switch and the mains filter as well. Because the WIB and everything onwards from that use a different pressure switch um, plug and a different uh, mains filter in. So with a different setup as well. But, so we're going to turn it on. I'm going to turn it on. Um, I'm going to shut it up. I'm going to set program 2. 90. Start. So the only thing that's annoying me is that this is. Won't go in properly. Because the actual fascia plastic, for some reason, won't sit properly. Even though it's exactly the same design. Exactly the same tabs, but it's what I said properly for some reason. So, what I'm going to do now is let it run for um, until it heats up. It's fine. I will do a wash at some point here. Yeah. Um, I've absolutely got loads of instants in a minute. So, um, the WIB11, that came with a welling motor, but because this has a CSAT motor in, it's a little bit different. So, we'll let them keep going anyway for a second while I get another machine in to test. <clears throat> right, so I've got this Bush washer dryer which I picked up off Facebook in town. Uh, and according to the owners, um, it, um, the door lock doesn't work and it trips electricity when in use. Well, I'll switch it on, it's not tripped anything. It's not switching on. Cut up. Hmm. Yes. So I've just taken out the fuse. Who's put that in? It's a three amp fuse. Maybe it didn't trip electric. Maybe it kept blowing its fuse because they're putting the damn wrong fuse in. Maybe it's tripped at uh, the first fuse, the 13 amp one, which means it probably is a problem elsewhere. But then to put a three amp one in. That's the 13. So we all just got to heating stage and blew the fuse. So this might blow the fuse as well, but it might blow the, the 13 amp that I've got here. Ready? So plug in. Three, two, one. I've still got nothing, that's weird. Seriously, my camera is 240 volts. Stupid thing. I know it's... Huh. 
appears to be nothing on the actual plug. Unless I put a dead fuse in. It's possible. I'm not getting anything. I know that the batteries on this are dying. I'll swap them out. Um, right. Let's take a look at the fuse then. Again. Alright, going to that, the fuse is fine. It's not blue. The little felt fuse does. This is, it has a piece of wire. So, don't make fuses work. So it's probably just, at the minute, the plug's not working, because it's not sending any power down. Um, so we'll have a look at uh, replacing the plug. I'm not being funny, but all this is Samsung. Oh, it's not Samsung. <laughs> However you want to see it. Um, because, like, the mains inlet here, I can replace, because I have one, from a Samsung. And it's exactly the same as well. It goes in there, and twists on. And that's all it does, with one screw. <coughs> the LG ones is pretty much the same as well. These inlets, these connections, are exactly the same as the Samsung. Um, the clamps are the same as the Samsung's, and the LG's as well. And it has one main board, like a Samsung. My LG. Although, everything's obviously... That board does look cheaper quality, so... Um, there's that. But most of these connections are pretty fine. That's quite impressive, this is. This is quite, um... Uh, it, this is a proper fan. And if you notice, it's all screwed in. Um, it spins at, what, 2,080 2, RPM fan? That's uh, pretty cool. Uh, the heater's there for the heater. It doesn't look like, so it mustn't be very big. It starts there, so it goes in, finds its way around, and comes back. Or it might be a double one, a double layer one. Um, it looks like we have a thermostat there. I don't know, it looks quite good actually for the money. Um, we've got our. <sighs> Tube there. It's, it's got its own uh, inlet on that. Cool. So right, I'm going to take out this cable, put in the one from the Samsung. I've got. See if it works. Um, that's been rewired by myself, so um, it works because it then went on the donor Samsung. No, it went on that Samsung down there, which is now on the strips. The one from that Samsung went onto that Samsung. That's got the wrong one on. That one's got that one on. Where I've rewired it. So now I've got to come over here and go on here to see if it works. Cool! Um, oh, and also, so here's the update on the WIB. And that's heating up, and it's heating up quite quickly actually. So I'm pretty impressed actually. This is actually at full boil now, literally. Uh, I'm going to drain it first, going to rinse and spin.
What do you mean? Do you want to do anything else? Wait, what? Okay, let's put on rinse. 